Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will teach you the rules for naming alkanes. So nomenclature is knowing how to name alkanes um, in order for us to learn how to name all other compounds. So even though alkanes are generally not exciting molecules, they're not very reactive, they give us a good foundation for nomenclature. So I'm gonna draw an example here that we are going to utilize as I walk through each of the steps for naming. An example that we did in the previous video, but now you'll have an idea of how to approach it. So the first rule is to find the parent chain. And that's always based on the longest carbon chain. And so in this case here, the longest carbon chain is one, two, three, four. And I like to use a highlighter to highlight the longest carbon chain because everything else will just be branches off of that chain. And so you also will, will worry about numbering it in a minute here, but I want you to focus on the prefixes. And these you will need to learn. So if you have one carbon chain, then that's meth. 2 is F, 3 is prop, 4 boot, 5 pent, 6 hex, 7 hept, 8 oct, 9 non, 10 dec. And so because we're focusing on alkanes, this is 4 carbons long, and so that's where we look here. So this is butane. Then you want to identify your substituents here. And substituents are branches. So you'll notice here that this is a branch, right, off of my parent chain. And how many carbons long is that branch? That branch is just one carbon. So that is a meth, right? And it's not methane because it's not the parent chain itself, right? It's actually an alkyl group, right? An alkyl group looks, looks a lot like methane, for example, CH4, but so CH4 we've learned earlier in a previous video is called methane because it's, it's one carbon long and it's an alkane. But in this case here, this is CH3. So to name, and then it's bonded to something else, right? It's bonded to the parent chain. So to name substituents that are alkyl groups, we take the original name, methane, we drop the A and E and replace it with YL. So we keep the meth part of it, and we replace the A and E with YL. And so that is why this substituent here is called a methyl group. You see here something that's two carbons long originally would have been an ethane if it was an alkane, but now that it is an, it is an alkyl group, it is ethyl. And that's where the alkyl, it goes from alkane to alkyl, comes from. You can see propyl, butyl, so on and so forth, right? And so in this particular example here, we have a methyl group. Then you want to number the parent chain to give the substituents the lowest number. Right? 
And so in this case here, we want a number from left to right. One, two, three, four. You can number from either end of a parent chain, but in this case here, we wanna give the substituent the lowest number, and so we want to number from left to right. Otherwise, the methyl group, if we numbered from right to left, it would have been one, two, three, and that wouldn't have given the methyl group the lowest number. And so we have a two methyl. Now, if you have more than one of the same substituent, then you have to use prefixes. Uh, so for example, if you had two methyl substituents, then that's a dimethyl. So two is di, three is tri, and four is tetra. Now, once you have everything identified, and I always like to write down the pieces of the name first before I glue them together to make the full name, because you want to write it all one word. So write the substituents alphabetically, not including prefixes if they exist. Separate numbers with commas and separate numbers and letters like I've done here with hyphens. So this would look like two hyphen methyl butane, all one word. Now there are some common, uh, common structural, you know, common alkyl group names that you will have to learn. The most common is isopropyl, and the way that looks in skeletal forms is showing the condensed structural form. So it looks like a fork in the road. So you have the rest of the molecule, and then the isopropyl group looks like a fork in the road. You also have an isobutyl group, and so you have your R group here attached to a CH2, and then it looks like it has almost like an isopropyl group attached to that CH2. You have sec butyl and then tert butyl here. And so make sure that you do learn some of these common names here for different alkyl groups. But for the most part in this specific class, we're mainly working with the traditional um, alkyl groups that you can predict from these prefixes in the table above. And then the only other one that's really common is isopropyl. So you definitely wanna become familiar with that specific common alkyl group. All right, so the big thing with nomenclature is you just got to practice. So make sure you're practicing problems when you're initially learning it. Have these rules out and available so that you can follow them. You don't miss anything. And then once you practice enough, it becomes second nature to you. So it's like learning a language, right? So we have to speak this language. But initially, we got to practice all the vocabulary, the verbs, the conjugation of those verbs, for example and then put it to use. All right, so let's name the following skeletal structures. The first rule is to highlight the longest carbon chain. How many carbons long is it? And in this case here, you can pause the video and I highly suggest that you do and try these on your own and then check your work. All right, so hopefully you said the longest carbon chain that you found was five carbons long. It's not always horizontal and left to right. In this case, it worked out. And what is the name of that? What's the name of that longest carbon chain? Excellent, pentane. Five carbons long. What were the substituents that you identified, the ones that were not highlighted, your branches? Okay, this is a methyl group, and so is this one. So you have a dimethyl, good. And what is this group, the substituent here? It's two carbons long, so that starts F 
Because it's an alkyl group, it is ethyl. Good. All right. Now we have to number it so that the branches or the substituents get the lowest number. In this case, this is a symmetrical molecule. So you can number from left to right or right to left. One, two, three, four, five. So we have a 2,4-dimethyl and a 3-ethyl. Remember to separate numbers and letters, use hyphens. If you have numbers in a row, and you separate those numbers by commas. And then you glue everything in such that the substituents are in alphabetical order, not including prefixes. And so does the dimethyl come first or the ethyl? Good, the ethyl goes before the methyl. Remember, we don't include the di in the alphabetical rule. So the full name is 3-ethyl hyphen 2,4-dimethyl pentane, all one word. All right, so some of you may have found another carbon chain. It was five carbons long, but not the same one here. So let me draw the structure again. I chose this example on purpose. <laughs> so you may have found that there's a carbon chain that's five carbons long this way. One, two, three, four, five. However, the issue with this one is that you have an isopropyl and a methyl. You only have two substituents. Whereas in this structure here, how many substituents did you have? We had a total of three, one, two, and three. So you may run into cases like this where you choose the longest parent chain and you have two choices of parent chains of the same length. Make sure you choose the longest parent chain with the most branching. and I should include longest. You never wanna just choose a parent chain because it has all the branches, right? You wanna make sure that it's still the longest parent chain. It's just that if you end up with two parent chains of the same length, then you have to decide which one's the best one to choose. Choose the one with the most branching. All right, let's do the next example. Find the longest carbon chain. looks like it's five carbons long. Sometimes students initially want to say four carbons long, right? Because they want to go from left to right, but it's not always horizontal. It's like a puzzle here. You have to find it. And it is five carbons long, which we know is pentane. So write that down. What's the substituent branching off? Excellent. It's a methyl group. And this is a symmetrical molecule so you can number from either end. It is a 3-methyl and so your final name here is 3-methyl pentane. All right, last example here. What's the longest carbon chain that you found? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully you found that one. And what's the name of an alkane that's seven carbons long? Excellent, heptane. What are the substituents 
that are hanging off of our parent chain. We have, what group is this one here? That is a methyl group, excellent. And what's the other substituent? Two carbons long? Ethyl, fantastic. Now we need to number our longest carbon chain such that it has the substituents of the lowest number. And so here we can number it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or we can number it from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So are you gonna number it from top to bottom or from bottom to top? Excellent, from top to bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the substituents get the lowest number. So we have a three methyl and four ethyl. Now, how are you gonna glue all of them together? Remember, we have to glue them alphabetically for the substituents, excluding any prefixes, which we don't have to worry about here in this example. And so what is the full name? 4-ethyl, 3-methyl, heptane. All right, good work, guys. Hopefully now you feel a little bit more comfortable naming alkanes. Keep practicing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.